welcome to the first episode of Corona Cooking. Yeah. So today we're going to be doing a pot roast. Um, I already have the, uh, what was this? Choice Beef Roast Chuck. Um, it was already frozen. We had it in the freezer, so we're going through a freezer right now. But uh, I've already uh, thawed it all out. And what I've done so far is I've just covered it in a lot of salt. Basically, we're trying to get a little bit of sweat going on. See all this liquid coming out? And the salt's going to start pulling all those juices out. Um, it's going to start help tenderize and just kind of help thaw it a little bit more, if you'd say. So uh, I'm going to clean up some of these juices real quick. Here's first, let's wash our hands. I already didn't wash my hands, but I thought I'd just wash them again, so I just touched it. Okay. We need more soap. Master Chef. Woo! Got that on. Got this. What a nice Ooh, birthday present, Christmas present. My mother in law. Yeah. Master Chef. Alright, so, first things first. We salted down the beef. That's all we did, just salt. No herbs, no nothing so far. So right now we're gonna put a nice little sear on it. With that sear, put a lot of those herbs and whatnot. We're just gonna lose it, it's gonna burn off. Um, got a nice little fat cap on there. Might turn a little bit of that off. Um, we just need a little rough, you know, a little trim up. We're gonna leave some fat, but you don't want too much. Learn that the hard way. You know, like lamb and stuff like that. When you leave too much fat, doesn't give it that, that flavor you're thinking it's gonna. It's gonna give it kind of like a chewy-ish, kind of gamey, overpowering. Um, did a pulled pork the other day, left all the fat on it, thought it'd really make it good. It just really made it really greasy, to be honest. So, enough of that. I said, you know, nothing perfect. You know, I still got some fat in there, but we're just giving it a little trim, trim. Trim, trim, trim. All right, so yeah, this thing's been sitting out on the counter for about an hour, salted, sweating, all that good stuff. All right, so in the meantime, what we should have been doing is getting a pan nice and hot. Um, over here, it's got a nice, you know, thick, you know, cast irons work well. Um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little sear on the outside of this, so fill a little caramelization, kind of get the cooking process started. Um, a lot of people say it's not necessary, but, um, I definitely think in a crock pot, even a roast, it will speed up the process a little bit. It'll kind of start that crust on the outside, so you're looking good. Um, this is uh, my wife's favorite part, because this is where I smoke out the whole house. And I'm about to get this pan ready. So I just took it off the heat for a hot second. Let's kind of see, uh, put me a little oil to help with a little uh, caramelization. Just doing a little here, there. Not a lot, you know, just a little sum sum. You're gonna have some fat on the uh, meat. Swirl it around a little bit. And now we're just gonna put that in, all right? So, uh, gonna let that sit in there for a little bit. Maybe, you know, a little, a little, a little salt on top. Bingo bongo. And then, you know, filling that sear. Um, in the meantime, oh, I'm gonna keep this piece of meat. I think that might be good. I'm gonna fill that trunk up right now. So now we're going to switch over to the vegetables. Now, I like color-coded cutting boards, just because you know, I do work in restaurants, and it's a good way to know what's been on what. So uh, I'm going to swap out my knife, and I'm going to swap out my board. So if you haven't noticed already, I have a really nice goatee going. Never had this before. When you're cutting, your board will slip around a little bit. So it's always good, just, you know, a little wet, damp towel, paper, paper towel, cloth towel. What kind of towels are there? All right, let's put that right there. <laughs> See, it kind of keeps it. Woo! Whenever I have cilantro, parsley, I love both of them. I know some people hate cilantro, but uh, I would like to keep the stems just for these type of things for uh, slow cooking. I like to take off the uh, twisties, um, as I don't really want to cook with that. Usually, just take a little bit of butcher twine. Good way to keep everything together. And just kind of give it a little aromatics in there. Not necessary. A lot of people won't do it. Grandma will probably say I'm dumb, but uh, yeah, just a little bit of flavor. I don't know. I would like doing this rather than throw it away. Seems not as wasteful. 
And that way, why I tie it together is so then I can put it in, I can just pull it right on out. So I got that ready to go. Go, bingo. Uh, next, we're gonna do our uh, classic merfois. That's French for carrots, onion, celery. Um, French of very short language. All right, let's start with some carrots. Ooh. Take the nubs off. Don't really have to. I really don't peel them. Maybe you want to the water. All right, so. How do you want to do our carrots? Let them whole, we do them in half, we do little slices. Small the carrots gonna cook faster. So maybe a little bit bigger, because we're doing a big roast, slow cook. We're cooking on high, really about five hours or so. Low probably take about eight hours. So I want some hardiness to our carrots, as I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Don't touch that, it's cool. I like carrots, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Then we have a few of potatoes, taters, some rough choppage. Again, you can add more and less. You know. It's your favorite root vegetable. Um, bingo! Next, we're gonna do our funions. They're fun because they make a crack. Oh, I forgot about the meat. All right, so you can see over here, it's kind of moving around a little bit. Yeah, it's not even got a sear yet, you know? I'll probably turn it up a little bit. It's not smoking, you know? So that's a good, good start. All right, back to the onions. Out on the knife, point away from you, and you don't want that thing to bite you. That's what Mr. Gordon Drysdale told me. <laughs> Remember that guy? All right. Carrot onion in the hole. Oh, celery. There we go. I'm gonna do like three ribs, two ribs. A little thicker. Again, it's gonna go in the roast, so we don't want it just to just dissolve. We don't have the pieces in there. But unnecessary again. It's what do we have? We have this stuff all around. Woo-wee! Got back to our meat. Get that little sear going. Ooh, got a little pan sear. Try, ooh, baby. If you can pop it up, if you can pop it up like a tower, it does absolutely nothing. All right. Well, this is just about, you know, just get a little sear. It's all I'm not trying to do. Nothing crazy. So, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Get that monkey rolling. Got a crock pot going right now. Um, I have it on low. I'm gonna turn it up to high. Um, just put a little bit of water in the bottom. Oh, and the piece of meat I forgot about. Okay. Yeah. Got a beef. Ooh, there we go. That's a nice sear. Woo! There we go. That's looking nice. I kind of throw in a lot of this aromatic stuff, kind of get it started. Let's just dump it all in. Is onion aromatic? Yeah. <laughs> 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 there we go. Some of that. Bingo bongo. Turn this bad boy off, turn off the heat. Kind of looking pretty good there. Salt on top, salt's your friend. Uh, a little fresh black ground pepper. You got a mount, you know, I want to get it penetrated in there. I like pepper too, it's kind of like garlic. Bay leaf, here we go. Bay leaves are always good. I bought some cheap ones, I don't think they really work too well, so I throw a lot in. So we got carrots, onion, celery, mare plot, got some garlic, we got a shallot, some shallot cross between onion garlic, we got some potatoes, we got some fresh thyme, we have some fresh oregano, and then salt and pepper, 
Uh, let's put a little bit of beef stock in here. Could be chicken stock, could be veggie stock. I do water. Maybe a little liquids. Hope everything steam. I always do everything with stock. Whenever I make rice, I always use chicken stock and never use water. I don't have chicken stock. I don't have chicken stock, I'll use uh, water with uh, some saffron. I got in the Greek islands. All that stuff. Not just for paella. Okay. I don't know. I just, you see, not really the measurements here. It's kind of just making it up. I'd say maybe about a cup, cup and a half. A little bit of water. I can't see it. Water. I mean, uh, beef broth. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, we got a little extra here. It's not going to be too much, but it's nice. So I'm going to put this on the sides. And then, my wife's favorite, just a touch of my salt on the top. And then we go. Set it and forget it. Don't forget. We'll check every hour or so. We'll rotate the meat. Maybe push around the veggies. See you, See you in an hour. All right, welcome back. So it's been about, what, about six, six and a half hours actually. Turn it down to low at about five hours. And now we're gonna start pulling everything out. We'll make a little uh, au jus out of the sauce. Keep the uh, beef nice and warm. Got the uh, oven on right now at about uh, 200. Got our resting rack ready. Here we go. It's just on a little rack right here, so let the meat sit. Let it cool down a little bit. Put the rack in the oven just for just a hot second, just to warm it up just a second. And then we're gonna pull out the veggies. Veggie, veggie, veggie. Cut the rest. And then we're gonna put this in the oven, just let them sit there and hang out. Those will be our uh, side vegetable. And then we wanna keep all this broth right here. That's why I didn't wanna just like dump it through a uh, strainer or something like that. Cause we wanna keep this awesome broth that we made right now. Cool. There we go. And put that right off to the side. There we go. And this is going to hang out at about 200 degrees in the oven. Get the rest of that stuff out of it. That's the rest of the Here we go. And then now with this stuff, we can make an awesome little, little au jus, little gravy. We've got all these good stuff, just kind of uh, sift it out. And then we're going to put this right onto the stove top. Well, welcome back. This has been about 10 minutes or so. Still kind of reducing this down, but uh, we're just about there. We're getting there. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to slice up the meat and we'll get it ready. So like I said, you want to cut against the grain. So if it's going the, the lines this way, why don't we cut them this way? Make it a little bit easier. Make little slices. Up to your choosing, make little steaks and do a little deli. Kind of whatever you're in the mood for. I honestly believe the next day it's even better. Uh, I think second day... Uh, Hot roast eggs. Dinner for us. And we'll probably make some uh, deli sandwiches the next day. Slice it up nice and thin. Um, that's one of my favorites, honestly. Slice it really thin. Put a little cheese on it. Put it in the toaster. Put it on a piece of bread. A little mayonnaise, mustard, lettuce, tomato. You got a great sandwich right there. Nice hot sandwich. Um, next. We're just waiting for this. Uh, Au jus to reduce, but it's just about there. And then we have uh, our veggies that we have just uh, sitting in at about 200 degrees, kind of getting some of those residual juices out of there. We got our meal. We're gonna have a little bit of steak, beef, potatoes, a little au jus, a little bit of our uh, horseradish cream. Looking good. All right, we're ready to eat. So we got our meat going. 
Got a nice uh, beef pot roast. Got some little onions in there, nice and caramelization. All that good. Look at that, looks great. Well, uh, thanks for watching my uh, very first cooking show. Um, again, like I said, this is uh, kind of inspired by the uh, coronavirus, but we'll uh, see what kind of direction we go with this. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If, uh, leave your comments below. I know that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll go from there. Till next time. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then what we're gonna do? <laughs>